So first of all, let me say my condolences to the families of the victims. Um, this is um, really, to me, is was such an unnecessary tragedy that, um, and I'm going to show you why. Why I think it was obviously unnecessary. Uh, these bridges, the way they're designed, is that at some point, and it should have been early on. <laughs> that's what we go parallel with that, isn't it? It's not supposed to be parallel. What happens is these cables, they will start to get, maybe I should start from this end. They will start to get, they will start to change angles, especially towards here, here we go. Um, because there is, there's one stationary point that they all connect to, and see these are wanting to go parallel. I'm trying to keep I'm trying to keep uh, sketch up from doing that so now let's see if I just draw these all out to where they want to go and this is obviously not going to be very accurate because it's from a photograph this is just a Whatever that one. <laughs> See, that's what. You can see how all these are going to converge at some point, right? And it wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been like this. It would have. Just trying to get to a point where I can put a structure in here, say right here, and it's going to go up, and then all of these cables will then um, come back down like that, like this. I'm just going to eyeball this. Okay. And this is the basic idea behind this, okay? You have a structure here, and these cables are in tension. They're supporting the weight of this bridge. You see these angles on these, these webbing that you think is a truss? This is not as much of a truss as you think it is because of the dynamics of these angles. You see the angle, I didn't draw it very well, but these these angles change. This is you know maybe forty five degrees, and this one's maybe thirty, and this one's maybe twenty five, and then this you know what I mean? that's not exactly accurate. I did that in reverse, right? They get steeper as they get closer to the structure. So then, um, but these cables are supporting. You can see these see these tie points up here. That's where these cables were going to tie in, okay? And you would have, you know, you, you would have groups of cables, right? It wouldn't just be, you would have a bundle of cables right there. And those would probably be wrapped and they would all be tied, you know, it would look like one big cable, but it would be many cables probably um, wrapped. So where I'm drawing this down here, that's to show the angle of my cable, okay? But they would have gone all the way up and attached to this center structure, which would have been pretty large, and it would have supported the weight because as these, as as this weight, which they reported 950 tons, wants to go down, it pulls on these cables, and in return, it pulls this cable this way as it's wanting to pull it that way. So there's sort of a balancing act there going on. Now, if you delete all that, what have you got? You got nothing. And this, I think some engineer, I'm not sure, but um, 
probably didn't, I mean, honestly, the, the weight of the materials on this bridge are gonna be more than any amount of pedestrians you can get on this bridge, okay? We're not talking about cars and trucks. We're talking about people. So if you assign a certain amount of square footage for each person, say three square feet or something, and then you line, you put all those people on that bridge and you count them and you add all their weights up, the average weight of those people, I don't think you'll come up with 950 tons. So the weight, this bridge, most of the weight it had to, to counteract was its own weight. Because I'm thinking this is pre-stressed concrete. The other thing that I was impressed with too is how flat this is. Usually on these cable state bridges or uh, these typical bridges like this, you'll see a slight camber uh, in them. And what that does is, is they pre-stress the cables. And so that once you start getting a, a vertical load going down, now you've got, not only do you have the resistance of the cables, let's put the cables back, not only do you have the cables resisting that downward motion at an angle, you also have the fact that you're compressing uh, you've got compression against a an arch where you're pushing that weight to the sides too. If this thing is flat, you know it's perfectly flat. Then all basically all the weight is on these cables, and I'm sure they've got I'm sure they've got some structure. Obviously, in here it has to account for this. In other words, there are members that have to go across. You know that that support that helps support this thing, but just think of the dy the, the dynamics of that. So you've got a, a basically a, a deck that's going to you know flop both ways and down, and and these connections here where, where these go, it's it gets complicated. The dynamics of a bridge like this are are complicated. So anyway, um, <clears throat> honestly, if I had been, I'm just a simple contractor, <laughs> but if, if I had been this contractor, I, w I would have resisted the idea of removing temporary supports. I, I would have wanted some temporary supports. Um, I would have left these, I would have just kept the road closed and kept these supports under here and gotten this structure up, gotten these cables up because uh, that's what their job was to do, was to, um, I don't know why that, that one wanted to keep going and went wacky on me. I know what it is. I'm trying to draw this quickly on a flat plane. But um, anyway, all of you engineering people out there, leave comments and let me know what you think. And I was going to go see... Um, Oh, here's the here is the picture. Here is a picture of a similar bridge. This may be, if not the bridge. Let's see if we can get this up. So you can see, but you see the angle. How that changes, obviously. Okay, so as you so each each of these cables has a different amount of load, you know, tension on it, right? So that means that these, these are not truly, this is truly not, not a true truss here. So when you set this bridge up here without the cables, the dynamics are different the way this is designed. If it had just been designed as a truss bridge, a truss bridge will support its own weight because of the fact that it's a truss bridge. Let me go see if I can find a one in SketchUp. Let's go up here to 3D Warehouse. Just type in Truss Bridge. If I can spell, here we go. There, there's a lot of them. Um, we'll just, we'll just, ah, oh, that's not a good one. Ah, that's some rookie did that one. What was the one I just saw? 
This one's okay. Yeah. I'm not going to. Well, I guess I will. I'm not going to download it. I'm going to zoom in on it. But you can see that that bridge um, is self supporting. No need for cables. Uh, and um, so, anyway, uh, I know it's, you know, hindsight's 2020, but, you know, as a contractor, um, this is going to obviously pretty much put them out of business. Well, they've got liability insurance, but still, this, this is something that um, puts companies out of business when you have deaths like that. And, and there's going to be negligence somewhere on this. Some engineer, some architect, somebody, you know, someone's going to get, and it'll take years for them to settle this in court. Uh, as to who, you know, unless they hire outside firms to come in and analyze everything. So, anyway, I just thought I'd do a quick video. I feel bad for the families. It's sad that they, uh, people, you know, um, can't trust necessarily our industry sometimes to, to do the right thing. I'm, I know people want to do the right thing. I'm not saying they purposely don't do the right thing, but... Anyway, put your thoughts uh, down in the comments. Thanks, guys.